Hey, hello, I'm Yolo. Today we will start creating a hand painted texture for our big character, and we will be working in Substance Painter. As you probably remember, in the last part we renamed our high poly and low poly models. I want to draw attention to the fact that we didn't just rename all the models, but we have to name the high poly and low poly parts with precisely the same names, with the exception of the ending. We will need this for baking later. I exported them as OBJ files, one for low poly models and one for high poly ones. Now we switch to Substance Painter and in the file menu press New. I don't choose any particular template for my work. The default one works just fine. I am pressing the select button and selecting my low poly obj file. I don't need any cameras or unwrapping, so I am unchecking them and pressing OK. Immediately I am switching to the orthographic view, since it will be much more comfortable to work without any perspective, and also switching to the base color. We will work only on that channel. And now it's time for baking. I am pressing Bake Mesh Maps button and adding my high poly model in the baking window. As for the distance settings, you will definitely need to experiment with them, try different options and see the result. You can copy mine, but they may not be the best option for your model, since a lot depends on the size of your model in 3D space. Now to the rest of the settings. I am changing output size to 2048, but you can keep size small for the first renders to make baking much faster. I am adding a bit of anti-aliasing. This setting helps remove pixelation. In the match drop down menu, select by mesh name. This way the baker only bake models with the same name and ignore the rest. Therefore, we don't need to take an extra step and explode our model for baking. And as I was lazy and didn't write the high suffix properly, I have to change it to my version. Moving to AO, I'm setting distribution to uniform and attenuation to smooth. In the curvature, I'm setting self intersection to only the same mesh name. It's the same idea here. Curvature map will only be baked onto object with the same name. And the thickness self occlusion is also only the same mesh name. Ok, done! Pressing bake. I have only one material and one texture for this character, so it doesn't really matter which button to press. But if you have several materials, press first bake to bake the current material selected or the next button bake selected textures to bake only the chosen textures. You can select those in there, by the way. After baking is finished, we must inspect the model. We need to make sure that everything is baked well and there are no visual artifacts anywhere. I have a problem with your eyebrows. As you can see, a part of the eyebrow is turned black. That happened because the hair casts a shadow on one of the eyebrows and the second eyebrow shares the same UV island. Therefore, I need to go back and make UVs for each eyebrow. I am making space for the new brow UV island and adding it to the rest of them. And also I am working on the eyes. I want to resize loops a bit. The most important part of the eye is the center, where the iris is located. But as for now, it is also the smallest part of the UV. So I want to give more space to what really matters, the iris. To do that, I am using proportional editing. The hotkey is O, and to change the influence radius, I am using the mouse wheel. That looks much better! And since we are here, I decided to clean up the corners of her mouth. Ok, nice! Now we have to export low poly models and to import them back into Substance Painter, press Edit, then Project Configuration and select your new model. But make sure that materials you use are the same. I am rebaking everything again and again and tweaking settings. Honestly, since I will redraw everything for a hand painted look, my baking textures don't need to be perfect. But if you are going to use your normal map or others in the game, then try to make it close to perfect. Ok, now we can finally start texturing. I am creating folders for each color or material on my character. So let's start with skin material. I am adding a paint layer and a generator. There are a lot of stylized generators or materials on the market for Substance Painter. And today I will use one of them – Stylized Texture Generator. 
I really enjoy using generators like that. Unfortunately, I'm not very good at drawing, and it's difficult for me to text the characters from scratch. But I can sculpt, so I can use the information from my sculpts to text the low poly models. And generators like this one can help a lot with creating a solid base for texturing. So how do they work? All they do is just use the information from your baked textures, that's all. To better understand generators like that, I recommend loading any model that has baked textures and just playing around with all the settings, moving all the sliders and seeing what they do. Just make yourself familiar with all those settings and then you can easily start using it. Let's go back to the model texturing. First, I will need some base skin color. And I found some random picture with a skin color that I like. I will try to copy it. As you can see, the beauty of these generators is that they give you light sources that you can rotate at will. And it looks like it's lighting a high poly model. That's so nice! We were able to use our sculpt not only for creating low poly models, but also for texturing. I will not go in depth with the settings I use, but as I said before, just play with all of them and see how they could be helpful in your work. I'm not looking for a perfect result right now, just a good base will do. Alright, I'm satisfied with the result, now we need to create a mask that will include only the character's skin and nothing else. I will start with geometry mask. I must say I love this feature. It was only added in recent versions and it's so lovely to be able to select meshes and hide others according to the selection. I mask their body, but that's not enough, so I am pressing the right mouse button on the skin folder and adding a black mask. That mask will hide everything and we will have to paint with white color to reveal only skin parts. I can hide other meshes by pressing this eye icon. And I'm switching to 3D 2D view with the hotkey F1. To select big areas of polygons, I like to use the polygon fill tool. Let's paint some polygons with white colors. I will not work on her skin further, but rather throw in all the materials and colors first. So let's move on to her eyelashes. It will be the simplest material of all. I'm creating a folder and adding a black fill layer. Then I'm adding a black mask to the folder and the paint sub layer and painting the eyelashes and inside of your eye sockets with the black color. So there is no visible transition to her eyelashes. Next let's work on the eyes. I try to paint the eyes as early as possible in the texturing process. This is because the eyes are very helpful in bringing the character to life and it becomes more pleasant to work with it. So the eyes are the only part that I will try to finish right away. I always do my eyes the same way. Step 1. Base white layer. I duplicated the base layer from the skin and planning to remove all the colors to create white base for the eyes. As you can see, although I said that I'm going to remove the colors, I still left some light color shades to make it a bit interesting. Step 2. I'm drawing iris. I'm creating a black fill color and adding a black mask to it. In the display settings, I turned on show mesh wireframe and I'm just painting a circle in the UV view. Step 3. <laughs> I'm adding another black fill layer with a black mask for her pupil. And the same as with her iris, I'm painting a circle, but this time a bit smaller. And now the fun part, let's start coloring our eyes. I'm adding a paint sub layer on the iris fill layer and not on the mask. So now everything we will paint will be masked with the circle that we drew earlier. When I'm painting eyes, I'm trying to create a color gradient from the dark color on the top and light and saturate on the bottom of the iris. Sometimes I also add some filters to the iris layer, for example the blur filter to make color smooth or the hue filter.
Okay, step 4. I'm adding a white fill layer for reflected light. And as always, don't forget to add that black mask with the paint sub layer on it. I'm going back to the pupil layer. I'm adding a paint sub layer and with dark blue color painting depth at the bottom of the pupil. Step 5. I sometimes skip this step, but here I'm adding one last fill layer with a black mask for the sky reflections and I'm painting those reflections really light with my soft brush. That's it, and now it's just refining the white part of your eyes a bit. Now we will switch back to her skin. I want to make it a bit more shiny. And for that I'm using the default material Bake It Lighting. I'm making the material completely black and removing the skylight. So the only light source that I have is the sun. Then I'm changing the blending mode to Linear Dodge to turn it into a skin highlight and playing with the roughness slider. She looks a lot more lively, but some parts I don't like. So I'm adding a white mask as I don't want to hide everything, and a sub layer for painting. And I'm painting with black color to hide the parts I don't really like. As we had only one light source, we lit her only from the front, and the back side is completely in shadow. So to fix that, I'm duplicating the baked lighting material and rotating the sunlight. And once again, I'm painting out with black color the parts I don't like. Next we will work on the eyebrows. Again, I repeat the same process. Create a folder, a mesh mask, copy the base material and change colors. I want her hair and eyebrows to have really close colors. So I'm duplicating eyebrows base material and creating a new hair folder. And once again, adding a black mask, paint sub layer and painting hair mask with white color. I'm using the polygon fill tool. Even though this material looks good on eyebrows, it's a bit too dark on hair. That's why I'm tweaking colors here and there to make hair overall lighter. But really, this is an early stage of texturing anyway. First we need all the colors and materials to see if they really work well with each other. And only then we can finalize them. Well, this is as far as we go today. Thank you very much for staying with me. See you next week.